It says, complete the rates and insurance account for the year ended 31st July 2018. You see, they have combined two expenses into one single account. Okay, so both of these are expenses. What does rates mean? Rates in Malay means uh means this. Okay, if you want to know more, know more about rates, then you search it online. Okay, it means this. But knowing that it's an expense is good enough for now. Insurance is also an expense. So they have combined two expenses into one single account. So you should you should expect to look for two sets of four elements. You need to look for two sets of four elements, which means you need to have two opening balances. You need to have two, uh, two amounts of amount actually paid. You need to look for two amounts of amount you have you should you should pay you also need to look for two amounts of the closing balance okay so it seems that the way you complete this is the same it's just that the volume is is more now the volume is more now okay you see more entries in the t accounts because they are a total of eight things eight things altogether next line tells you to do balancing process okay you notice or not uh it says the year end is 31st July, right? Now, determine the beginning of the year. It is August 1st, 2017. That's the beginning of the year. What have they done for you? The opening balances. You see, August 1st, August 1st, 2017. They have done the opening balances for you. You see, the balance BD, the balance BD. But you see, it is slightly different the way they present the details they have the, the name of the expense within bracket. Notice or not? Okay, let me highlight for you. Insurance in bracket, rates in bracket. We must do the same to every other, to every other details that you are going to write here. Okay, you must label to indicate that item is about rates or insurance. Okay, otherwise it's, it's very confusing. Okay, you must label correctly uh, which item is about race, which, which item is about insurance with that, with that name of expense within the bracket. Okay, so I show you, I show you soon. So observe carefully how I do this question because you have another question to do as homework. Okay, so when you try on your own, you would know uh, what is the challenge. Okay, so create this question for eight marks. This is a past exam question, okay? It's a commonly commonly uh, assigned question for the exam. Okay, for eight marks, a lot of marks. So this question, they have helped you to complete the opening balances. You see, one more, one, one is for insurance, another one is for rates. Okay, so congrats, you, you, you don't have to do this, opening balances. Okay, now we start to read from the top. Sarah maintains one combined account for rates and insurance. On August 1st, 2017, what day is that? Whenever you see a date, don't just, don't just take the date as it is, okay? You must know what it means. So the date here is beginning of the year. How do I know? I look at the beginning of the year that I found just now. Two months rate 800 and insurance 570 were prepaid. 800 were outstanding, 570 were prepaid. So we know that these, these are all opening balances. Are they CA or CL? Rates outstanding and expense that is outstanding is current IBT. So have they recorded it correctly? Yes, they recorded it on the credit side, right? Okay, good, they have recorded it correctly. And then 570, prepaid. Prepaid means you paid in advance. You overpaid the reinsurance is a current asset. Have they recorded it correctly? Yes, they have recorded it on the debit side. Okay, can see, right? So first paragraph they have done they have done for us. Okay, now continue. During the year, the following payments were made by check. So what you are going to see next, which are these two numbers, they are the amount you have actually paid during the year. Amount you have actually paid. Congrats, you have found another element. Okay, just now you found the opening balances. 
now you found the amount actually paid. You paid on these two respective dates, 1st September and November 1st respectively. Okay, now let's record this amount first, okay, shall we? It says by check, so look carefully, by check. So credit bank, then you debit this account. Write these two amounts here. Credit bank, then debit this account. Details, you write name of the other account, right bank. Okay, like I mentioned just now, you have to label to indicate what, what each of these number is for. This is for rates. This is for insurance. Okay, don't label it with short form, okay? Must write it in full, the word rates and insurance. Now copy the dates, copy and paste. Okay, so now we are done with the opening balances. We are done with the amount actually paid. Okay, hold on, yeah, uh, it's saving, uh, it's still running. I, I, I cannot scroll yet. Okay, now you see, there are a few lines that I have not interpreted for you. Okay, here it says for 13 months to 30th June 2018, this, this line says for 12 months to 31st October 2018. Okay, I will tell you what they mean soon, but I would like to solve the last paragraph first. Last paragraph is something very special and you must remember what are the entries here. Okay, for this last line, it's actually about drawings. Okay, so you must remember how you record drawings in, in incomes or expense account. Okay, so you see, it says what? 31st July, on 31st July 2018, what day is that? Year end. So at the end of the year, it was found that 1,000 of the insurance paid on 1st November 2017. Is it correct? Yes, right. It's paid on 1st November 2017. Related to Sarah's private house. Remember, I mentioned the word drawing just now? It says private house. Is it for business? No, for sure, right? So this amount is known as drawings. If you remember what are the dependencies for drawings from what you learned in part three, you should debit drawings, okay? But you don't credit cash, you don't credit bank, you don't credit purchases but you credit this insurance account. Okay, make sure you write this down, okay? The double entries for drawings. Okay, now record it accordingly. So credit insurance account, 1,000. And then you write drawings, the name of the other account. Again, in bracket, write what this is for. This is for insurance. Okay, what is the date? Uh, the date of the date of discovery, the date of discovery of this uh, drawing, which is the year end. It says on 31st July, right? It was found. Okay, this question I strongly encourage you to redo. Okay, redo and compare with the answers uh, when you are when you are free. Especially when you it is a few days before the exam or a few weeks before the exam. Okay, because it's, it makes a big difference when you do it on your own, okay, compared to observing me doing along. Okay, so last paragraph solved. Now let's solve the, the ones in pink color, okay, the ones highlighted in pink, pink color. It says what? It's telling you that, remember just now these two amounts are amount actually paid? 5200 and 3400. Okay. Here it says that this 5200 dollars, this 5200 dollars is for 13 months of rates. And this payment is, is for rates until 30th June 2018. Okay. That means who, who are we here? We are, we are Sarah. Okay. We have paid for the rates 
until 30th June 2018. Okay, we have paid for the rates until June 30th, 2018. Have we overpaid or underpaid? Okay, I'll let you answer me. You, you, you observe carefully. Has, have we overpaid or underpaid? We are Sarah. We have paid for the rates until 30th June 2018. Have we over or underpaid? To determine the answer, you compare with the year end. The year end is this. We are supposed to pay until 30th, 30th July 2018. So have we underpaid or overpaid? Okay, good, Justin, correct. Okay, Yuan Yue, I wait for you. Maybe you are digesting. Okay, Yuan Yue should be underpaid. Okay, you see, uh, let me repeat again. This 5200, this 5200 is amount actually paid, agree? And the ones in pink color here, the ones that I highlighted in pink color, it says that this 5200, $5,200 is for rates payment until 30th June 2018 only. Until 30th June 2018 only. Okay, so you compare this date with the year end, that means you have paid one month less. You agree? You have, you have underpaid by one month. You have not paid for July. Do you get what I mean? So underpaid by one month because the July you have not paid. Okay, you have paid until June only. So this is an underpayment. We call this as a current liability. That means this is the closing balance. Okay, at the year end, you have not paid for July. Okay, now find this amount, one month's amount. To find it, you take the 5200 times 1 over 13, times 1 over 13, because it says $5,200 is for 13 months of rates. Okay, so 5200 times 1 over 13, what would you get? Four hundred. Okay. Now, congrats. From this, from this ping, from this ping line, you have found that the closing balance for rates is a current liability of four hundred dollars, underpaid by one month. Okay, underpaid by one month. Okay. Now, uh, that's that's what we have found. Later, we record it. Okay. Now, for insurance, it says that. The $3,400 paid, the $3,400 paid is for insurance until 30th October 2018. So we are Sarah, have we overpaid or underpaid? We have paid for the insurance until 30th October 2018. So you tell me overpaid or underpaid, then you tell me by how many months. Okay, overpaid or underpaid, and then by how many months. We have paid for insurance until 30th October 2018. Okay, good, correct, Yuan Yue. Okay, then you tell me how many months. Okay, good, Justin, correct. Yes, three months, three months. Okay, so Yuan Yue should be three months. Okay, once again, how do I know three months? You compare this date with the year end. Okay, the accounting period we are looking at is until 30th July 2018. But here it says we have paid until the 31st October. So that means we have overpaid for, we have overpaid for August, September, and October. We have overpaid for three months. You get what I mean, Yeah. Okay, we have paid for insurance until 31st October 2018. Okay, so 
overpaid three months. Okay, I know uh, it's a bit messy here because I circle here and there. Mm, let me write it somewhere here. Okay, I write it uh, at, at the bottom left, okay? For insurance, overpaid by three months. So the closing balance for insurance is a current liability because we have underpaid. Overpaid, right? Sorry, sorry. Overpaid. Okay. Should be a current asset. Current asset. Okay. O overpaid by three months, right? Just now you say. Okay. Now find three months amount. 3004 times three over 12. 3004 times three over, five, over 12. 850. Okay, congrats. Now you have found the closing balance for the insurance. Okay, closing balance for insurance is a current asset 850. Okay, so uh, this question is considered one of the most difficult questions for the topic. Okay, that's why I encourage you to redo. Okay, now let's record accordingly. It's been some time, okay, when we are doing this question. Just now, we have been given the opening balances. And then we did the amount actually paid, right? And then what is the missing figure? The shoot amount is the fi missing figure that we have to find afterwards. Okay, we have to find it afterwards. Okay, by the way, now I can recall that The calculation for the closing balance of insurance is not right. Okay, I, I should not take 3004 times 3 over 12. Okay, let me make some amendment here. We should take 3004 minus 1000 first. Then only times 3 over 12. Reason is this. Because 1000 overpayment is for drawings. Agree? So we have to take 3004 minus 1000 first. Then only times 3 over 12. Okay, so uh, let me recalculate. It should be 600, okay? Not 850, it should be 600. Okay. Okay, you follow me, you follow me. Prepare the, prepare the areas for the shoot amount. Prepare the area for the shoot amount. Right income statement. One for insurance, one for rates. Prepare them, okay. Okay, now write the closing balances. Okay, just now we found for rates, right? Rates and insurance. Rates, the closing balance is $400, okay? The one highlighted in yellow, $400. It's a current liability. $400, rates, current liability. Okay, move it up diagonally. Okay, complete the date, complete the date. Okay, now the closing balance for insurance, the 600 that I amended just now, okay, the 600. So hmm, that's, the, that's the tricky part. That's, the, that's one of the tricky parts as well. Okay, have to ensure that you minus 1,000, that's for drawings, before you times three over 12. There's a current asset, right? Okay, right here. Okay, now complete the date. 
okay, congrats, you have found all the three elements, opening balance, amount actually paid, as well as the closing balances. Okay, have taken, have taken some, some time, right? Okay, now we can find the street amount, which are the missing numbers. Okay, let me tell you how to find. You notice, I don't have dates here. Why? Because it's the same date as 2018, July 31st. Okay, so it's the same date, so I don't repeat writing it. I don't repeat, I don't repeat writing the dates. Okay, now we have to find the shoot amount one at a time. Okay, so now we focus on finding the insurance shoot amount first, shall we? Okay, the insurance shoot amount. When you are trying to find this insurance should amount, you focus on all the insurance items only. That means this one, focus on this, focus on this, focus on this, focus on this only. Okay. Then you see which side is greater. You total up, you minus all other numbers on the right. Then you can find the should amount. So that means you take the 570 plus 3400 then you minus the 1,000, minus the 600, then you can get the shoot amount for insurance, the amount that you should pay during the year. Okay, you calculate and tell me the number after you have rejoined. Okay, after you rejoin, you tell me what you get. Okay, I found a number, I found a number. Okay, let's exit now, let's exit and rejoin. Okay, and then you tell me the amount, tell me the amount for the shoot amount for it. Okay, Justin, what you managed to find? The shoot amount for insurance. Yeah, correct, 2370. Hmm. Okay, now both of you find the shoot amount for rates. So focus on all the rates numbers, then you find find that number, find that missing number. Uh, Justin, you have to check your calculator. Uh, that's not the right figure. Yeah, when you that's correct. Mm, Justin, try again. Focus on all the numbers about rates. Then you find the missing number. Uh, no, Justin, wrong. Be careful, look at your look at the numbers carefully. You show me your workings. Maybe you type the workings. I let me see your workings. Then I would know your mistake.
Mm, yes, Justin, what, what is your new figure? Or you want me to, or you want to show me the workings? Mm, hurry up. Minus zero, you sure? Look carefully. Here is a number about rates. Here is a number about rates. So yeah, you total them up. Is there any number about rates on the credit side? You see, the one is in blue. Yeah, $4,800. Okay, so look carefully, be careful. Okay, must always be alert and sensitive to all the numbers. So $4,800. Okay, eventually, both of you now try to total up both the debit column and credit column. We must get the same number. We must get the same number for both the debit column and credit column. If they are not the same, it means you make a mistake. Okay, so let now let's let's do it. Nine five seven zero for the debit column. Nine five seven zero for the credit column. It means that we have done it correctly. Nine 